Okay. I am going to do your invocation tonight. And uh, my invocation is an old one, but a good one. And it is, once the task has begun, never leave until it's done. Be it great or small, do it well or not at all. And if you would cover your heart, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Back to you, Toastmaster. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Olivia. And that's a good invocation as well. It's Procrastination is something, usually once I get going with a task, I'll, I'll finish it, but some I have been known to put things off and, and, and never come back to them. So that, that's a good invocation. And we've already done club business. And I think we're ready to move on to the Toastmaster role, which will be me this evening. So I'll introduce myself as Toastmaster. And I think we've pretty much got the agenda set up. I'll just briefly go through. Cheyenne is going to be our grammarian. And let's see. Actually, yeah, I'll go ahead and, and let everybody introduce themselves and what role they'll be doing. That would be the proper way to do it. So I'll start with the grammarian and all counter this evening, which will be Cheyenne. Hello everyone, like he said, I will be your grammarian and your off-counter. I will be looking for misuses of the English language. I will also be looking for filler words. Um, uh, so, you know, I am guilty of this myself. I'll also be giving you the word of the day, which is costive, S or sorry, C-O-S-T-I-V-E. I did not pick this word, so bear with me with the definition. The first definition is causing constipation. The second definition is slow or reluctant in speech or action. <clears throat> An example of this in a sentence is I or I was of a costive habit which has been removed or if he asked her that question, she would become costive. So I will be interested to see the creativity, creative uses of the word costive. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia. I mean, ugh, Cheyenne, that was odd. Okay, well, moving on, can we have the role of timer, which will be Olivia this evening, please? Good evening, everyone. I am your timer tonight. I know we have one prepared speech. Carrie, is your speech going to be timed? Can we time your speech? I like to know how many minutes and not necessarily set the time because I'm going to make this presentation Wednesday for the meeting. And um, I would like to know is how many minutes. Okay, just know how many minutes. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So do you want me to alert you at any time at all or just... Whatever the minutes is, just record them. The second. Okay. And then for Donovan, Donovan, your speech is 10 to 12 minutes, correct? Yes. Okay. So I went and scrounged up what I had. So for green, it's going to be this little plant here. It looks kind of real, doesn't it? Okay. Yeah. I'm making fool somebody. Anyway, this will be green at 10 minutes. At 11 minutes. This will be your yellow. Oh, well, that side is yellow. And then at the 12 minute mark, you will go red. And at the end, oh, also we will have our table topics. And those speeches are one to two minute impromptu speeches. So I uh, will follow the same criteria at one minute. This will be your green. One and a half, this will be your yellow. And then at the two minute mark, this will be red signifying it's time for you to wrap it up. All right, that is it for your timers roll. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you, Olivia. And moving on for our final two roles will be table topics master and general evaluator. And we have Kyler down for each of those. So if 
That's good. Kyler, if you could give us some descriptions, please. Sure. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. As my um, role for Table Topics Master, I will be asking you an impromptu question to sort of keep you on your toes, help you get ready for those elevator speeches, and be able to uh, riff and come up with answers on the fly. Uh, this week's Table Topics is actually going to be one question, but I'm going to ask everybody, and I think it is open-ended enough that we could get some pretty interesting answers, and I think we could all learn something from it. As my role as general evaluator, I'll be just keeping an eye over the whole meeting and just letting you guys know at the end of the, end of the, end of the meeting what my thoughts were. And back to you. Thank you, Kyler. I think we're ready to get started with our first speaker. I did uh, have a question. Maurice is set up to be your evaluator, Carrie. Would you, would you like an evaluation? Yes, I would like to. Okay, so just a general evaluation as a pocket speech. And also my understanding for Donovan's presentation, you would just like a group feedback on, on what you did? Yes, but yes, so. Okay, great. So we can do those both during the evaluation portion of the meeting. So we'll move on to our first speaker of this evening, which will be Carrie Noma, and she will be giving a pocket speech about practicing meditation. To practice meditation. These three words sound very familiar to all of us here. They are nothing, nothing new. Kiri is not a native English speaker, but she finished college education in the US. She knew the definitions of all the words to practice meditation. However, to practice meditation, when I heard these three words all together for the first time, I got a little confused. For me to practice something is to practice playing a piano for a recital, to practice basketball for a game on Sunday, or to practice my English for an English speaking test. To practice something. So are we going to have a, some sort of meditation competition? We all sit in the big room and compete who meditates the best. Venerable Nicholas is a judge uh, Kiri, you're moving too much, minus 30 points, okay? Uh, Davey, you, you're not supposed to sleep, minus 100 points. Olivia, you're doing very well, good, plus 50 points. My American friend told me, no, Kiri, to practice meditation is just perform or do meditation, not rehearse. I have practiced meditation for more than four years. It took for a while to realize that to meditate, to practice meditation was much more than just to do it. It is really, really to practice meditation. In March, 2018, it was a warm and quiet spring night. I was driving on Old Shell World on the way back from the wonderful meditation lecture by Dr. K and Kent. I learned something new. I got more educated and even smarter. Ooh, I feel so good. And then, <gasps> car accident. It was around 10 p.m. I was shocked. Didn't know what happened to me first. My mind had gone. Well, it's, I think it's too soon to uh, make a conclusion. I have still more time. I'd like to share two stories before concluding my presentation tonight. When my sister and I were still very little, my mom told us, line up your shoes neatly. Are you going to leave your shoes like this at your friend's house? In Japan, we take off the shoes at the entrance. We all know that. My sister said, mom, I will do well at my friend's house. Mom said, if you don't practice every day, 
you couldn't do it well at your friend's house. There is an etiquette, meaning certain steps and then specific ways of taking off, taking off shoes and line up the shoes. Not just to take off the shoes and put on all together. No, there is a certain way. My mom, sister, and I visited my grandmother. When we entered her house, we took off our shoes. My sister let her shoes behind and it didn't line up. The left shoe was there and the right shoe was here, there just as she did at home. This happened because she didn't practice. Mr. Dusev is my long-term business client and he, was a, he is a wealthy French business person. In 2012, I visited his chateau or French castle. It was a huge and beautiful house, just like a castle of Walt Disney movies. I felt like Cinderella or Marie Antoinette. How fantastic. We enjoyed his wife homemade French dinner. I am interested in table etiquette. I have studied it since I was a teenager. I went to the seminar and studied with books, websites, and online tutorial. I sometimes cook French course, French course dinner, and practice using use how to practice how to use fork, knife, and spoon. Mr. Dusem saw me having dinner in an elegant and a sophisticated manner, and said, "Kiri, I am impressed with your table etiquette. You need to teach my daughter." I thought, I thought yes. Yeah. This happened because I have practiced. Now let me go back to the car accident night. On the moment of the impact, I saw my mind jumping out of my mouth. I was upset, shocked, and confused. But at the same time, I knew exactly what to do. Meditation. I closed my eyes and breathed slowly and deeply to refocus my mind on the center of the body. Probably I meditated for no longer than one minute, maybe only 30 seconds. I was too shocked, but my mind got clear. I could think logically. Okay, what I need to do now is to make sure if I'm okay. I'm okay. Pull my car to the shoulder, stay with the seatbelt on, call police, grab my driver's license, car registration, and insurance card. This happened? Well, this does not mean the car accident, okay? This means the fact that I meditated immediately after the accident. Again, this happened because I have practiced. Love is full of unexpected happening. But if you practice meditation or rehearse meditation, you could use this powerful tool and it help you when something unexpected happens to you. If you don't practice the violin, you wouldn't play well in a concert. If you don't practice your English, you will fail the English test. If you don't practice soccer, you will lose a game on Sunday. Please practice meditation for the day you really need it. Practice, practice, and practice. Those master. Thank you, Carrie. That was very good. Practicing meditation. That meditation is not a score. There's not a World Olympics of meditation, who's going to score the highest and get the gold medal, but it's it's a practice and it's a go to thing when we're stressed. That's very well put. And because when I'm stressed, my tendency is to try to go to worry and anxious and cry or run up and down. But but if I can automatically go to meditation, 
because I practiced it, then it, life is much easier or much more calm. And so very good. Thank you. Moving on to our second speaker, we have Donovan, who will be giving a, an oral presentation for a practice speech, which will be 10 to 12 minutes. And then afterwards, during the evaluation, we'll give some group feedback. So um, over to you, Donovan. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. What I'm going to do is I have a paper that I have to do from a history class, and we are required to do a oral presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read my paper. Hi, my name is Donovan, Donovan O'Malley, and in this paper, I'm going to walk through Conrad Adenauer's goals and how the Cold War affected them. One of the points I'm introducing is reunification of Germany. The second point I will introduce will be how Adenauer wanted, wanted integration with the West. I will then discuss his distrust he had towards the US. And the last point I will end the paper with is his concern of communism. This discussion will center on how Conrad Adenauer navigated West Germany during the Cold War and why he was more inclined to the United States and the Western Allies than the Soviets. While Conrad Adenauer was the Chancellor in West Germany, he had two goals. One of the goals was to reunify Germany and integrate Germany with the West. His goal was to navigate and help his country after World War II, despite his distrust towards the US and his concern about the expansion of communism. The Cold War was between two countries, the United States and the Soviet Union. This conflict also affected other countries as well, like Germany, for instance. In the early 20th century, Germany entered into war against Britain, France, Russia, that led into World War I, which lasted until 1918. Following the war, the German people and economy were devastated. Hitler began to rise in power during the 1920s became Chancellor in 1933. The Nazi party rose to power in 1933 with Hitler as Chancellor. He used radio as a means of communicating with the people to promote the Nazi vision. One of his goals was the extermination of Jewish people as he started to advance towards France in Russia. The beginnings of World War II started. The Berlin Wall caused a division of Germany between the Eastern and the Western as a way of keeping East Germans from leaving the West Germany. After World War II, Germany was divided into four sections, which were occupied by the Soviets, the French, the British, in the U.S. military, who stood when the, when the war ended. One of the points of the current history of West Germany was the Marshall Plan. The Marshall Plan began in June of 1947, which helped with the economic recovery after World War II. This also promoted American economic and political values to Europe. Conrad Adenauer was the first German chancellor of the Federal Republic of Germany in 1949 through 1963. Early in his career, 
There was the mail of one of the big cities in Germany. When Hitler came to power, Adenauer went into hiding, and at one point he was arrested. After he was released from prison, after the war, he began to help and shape Germany. He was against, he was also against Hitler in his reign of terror in his book Mein Kunst. When Adenauer was out of jail, he had to accept a painful division of his country, the hope of saving non-Soviet portion, non-Soviet portion by aligning it with countries to the West. He was elected to be the Chancellor of Germany and changed his, the divisions that was happening at that time. He showed outstanding leadership qualities, political sense, and tremendous performance. Adenauer was a strong, willed, and energetic politician of authoritarian style, rigid, and at the same time, flexible, skeptical, and pragmatic. In a question I had to list at home. One of the points that Conrad made was reunification. He used the Marshall Plan to give new hope and help with some provisions according to the plan itself. Conrad told Walter Brooks that these programs, like the Marshall Plan, the Berlin Airlift, and NATO, helped to determine the will to face a communist threat. This reunification let the Germans to avoid neutralization so they could be able to build Germany into the West. Another point he talks about is to be able to integrate to the West by the desires of a free society. The West was willing to accept Adenauer for what they helped by the help of the West, which helped to put Conrad trustworthiness, which contributed to a living side for Conrad to win the election. Even though Adenauer did not trust Kennedy, he did have trust with President Truman. Because he trusted Truman, it helped the Germans to gain a new sense of hope. And the Marshall Plan helped Germany with their success. Because Adenauer knew General Marshall, it helped with relations with Truman, which had an effect on Germany. The reason why Conrad did not trust the U.S. was because the United States, France, and Britain was planning Germany's future without talking it over with the German leaders first. He is concerned that his country will end up fighting the foot soldiers and shock troops from an anti-communist offensive force that the United States might build in Europe. One of the reasons behind Adenauer's distrust of the U.S. was because President Kennedy said he was, when he was a senator, was that the age of Adenauer was over. This means that Adenauer had a bound. This means that Adenauer had a conflict with JFK because he publicly said that the time of his power was over which, which um, hit him. By JFK's lash out to Adenauer, Adenauer decided to call for independence that so he would be able to run his country as he pleased as a way of getting back at JFK. One point that would introduce how Germany was affected was when the Marshall Plan was initiated by the U.S. The Marshall Plan was to guarantee $12 billion for reconstruction funds for European states. This was for economic recovery, plus it was to try to prevent the spread of communism. Germany was one of those states that benefited from that from the plan, but they were uncomfortable because initially the Germans were not given 
the freedom to decide on how to use the money. West, West Bromley decided to represent this possibility for foreign affairs to German officers. Because the Chancellor distrusted the US, that caused him to be haunted due to the Allies trying to find an answer to the question that the Germans proposed. The last point I am presenting to you is Adenauer's concern about communism. One concern was when he went to Moscow and he said that it is a danger for free nations and the population and our statesmen to be deceived. But the concern of communism, he did say that historians agree today that the Soviet Union really saw the sources of its security, not only in the sphere of influence in Eastern Europe, but also in a pacified zone in Central Europe, which would not threaten the Soviet Union. This describes that Adenauer was close to the Soviet Union at one point. Adenauer was also had this idea that nuclear disarmament would pacify the Germans' concern of a nuclear world war, even though he might have seen that he was close to the Soviets. He also had a peace campaign to push his anti Communist plan with more integrity. The point of Germany was not occupied by the Russians, it is an integral point of Western Europe. Because communism was fearful of com communism, he did not trust the Soviets, particularly around reunification. In conclusion, based on Comrade Adenauer's desire to rebuild Germany after World War II, he, he aligned himself with the Western allies of France, Great Britain, and the United States. This alliance with these countries believed would help to stop the events of communism. Thank you. Um, I don't want to keep um, y'all, um, whatever the um, well, the day is um, just I want to go ahead and I'll bring the question of that going back to the test So Thank you. Thank you, Donovan. And history was not my strongest point in school, but that brings back memories and it's really good to understand history and how it has affected the world because as they say, if, if you don't remember your past, we're doomed to repeat it. And those are some powerful figures in our past. So thank you for that, for that practice speech. And we're not gonna have an educational overview tonight or I don't think we have any awards. So we will have a little extra time at the end. So we'll, we can go ahead and go straight to our table topics and we should have time for, for a full round of table topics. So I'll turn the lectern over to Kyler, our table topics master. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters. So I will start by asking for a volunteer who would like to go first. I'll try. You go. All right. So the question that I'll be asking everybody tonight, and I think it'll be interesting. Um, I was listening to a podcast today while I was working and during the podcast, there were different people talking and chiming in and talking about um, some of their favorite bands. And through the process, I just like learned about so much more music that I was totally unaware of. So my question tonight for you, David, is what song are you obsessed with right now? What song are you listening to the most? And what do you think you like the most about it? So this could be, it doesn't have to be your favorite song of all time, but just, just what are you listening to right now? Thank you, Kyler. So the question is, what is my current favorite song and why am I obsessed with it? It's funny, I have a YouTube subscription where I don't have to watch the advertisements because I watch so much stuff on YouTube. And sometimes I'll just put on different music and listen to it and it figures out what I like. And 
lately has been playing a lot of an old band called Styx. If you remember Styx, when I was a child, Styx was by far my favorite band. Absolutely fell in love with them. And then I heard them a few years back off and on just play on the radio. And I thought, you know, why did I like that so much? But lately on YouTube, I've been watching some of their live performances and I've really fallen in love with them again. It's just powerful, powerful music. It's funny how music is that way. Sometimes if we're not in the right mood or we don't hear it in the right light or just depending on our background, music affects us differently. But, but lately, sticks. I think the name of the song is Pieces of Eight. And it's just such a beautiful song the way it starts out. It starts out with just this melody and it's how it says like at 6 a.m. You know, the day's just starting. Everything's beautiful. And but, you know, I hurry through my life and don't realize how beautiful it is. And I mean, it's very philosophical, too. And I can actually understand their words. Some 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 singers is, I have struggled to understand. But but the when I listen to the actual lyrics, I don't know, it moves me in a certain way. And it's a powerful thing, but I absolutely love that song right now. So at that, at this moment in time, that's my favorite song. Probably won't be for long. I switch from one thing to another, but that's it for now. And that's a great question. Thank you. And back to you, Mr. Table Topics Master. Awesome. Thank you, David. I, I enjoy sticks as well, although I admit I'm only on their surface level. So I, I definitely want to move and take some time to listen to uh, pieces of eight so I can get to know them better. I think, um, I can't think of the title of the song, but the one that's like, the jig is up, I'm moving out. That That's the that's my favorite stick song. I just can't think of the name right now. Renegade. Really the rhythm of it. Renegade, I think. Yeah, Renegade, there we go. That's <laughs> it. All right, so moving on, who else would like to answer this question? What is your favorite song right now, and what do you like the most about it? Um, Maurice is making some faces over there. I think he's got something. <laughs> I'll call him Maurice. Okay. Um, fellow Toastmasters and fellow Toastmasters. Hmm. I don't have a particular favorite song, but I've listened to different ones, and uh, and I guess as you get older, you you look you you listen to some songs that you haven't listened much in the past, and. You get to appreciate some and you get to learn about, um, excuse me, some others. But once, let me see, one song. Well, really, I have a bunch of songs at different times that ring in my head. But there is one song that I listened to back in the day. And another funny thing is. When I was much younger, I never really paid much attention to lyrics. But as I got older, I get to learn lyrics and, and meanings of, of some of the songs. But when I was coming home, I, I, just, I just pushed the buttons between different radio stations. And one of the radio stations, this song called Radar Love was just happened to be playing that 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 uh, was that was on the charts when I was little. And there was a particular part of the lyrics. Which for a very long time, you know, I just glossed through it, you know, I didn't really pay attention, but it goes the radio as playing is the radio is playing that forgotten song Brenda Lee coming on strong and I and I researched that not too long ago and Brenda Lee actually had a song called coming on strong and I never heard of it until I did the research <laughs> of that lyric so that the particular song that I listened to recently it was radar love Back to you, Topics Master. <laughs> Thank you, Maurice. That, that was a good one because not only is it a recommendation from you, it's a recommendation from the artist that you're recommending 
because he's he's uh, incorporated his influence into his own song. So that's that's kind yeah. of a two for one right there. So that that was a good one. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things is finding the artists that I listen to and try to figure out what inspired them. And it's often something really good. So, um, all right. So, Shannon, do you like to go next? Sure. <laughs> you know what I listen to, but um, so hello, fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> I've been asked what have I been listening to the most lately. Uh, well, I just recently started going back to the gym because I have my vaccine. So I have my gym playlist, but when I'm home alone and I'm relaxing, um, don't laugh, but I love classical music so much. And one of my favorites is the Turkish March by, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, Wolfgang or Amadeus Wolfgang Mozart. And I just love that song. I even made a playlist. It's called Classical Music That Slaps. Um, <laughs> and I made a playlist of all my favorite songs. I also like instrumental music a lot with like John Williams, like the Star Wars theme. Mm. Uh, he did the Harry Potter theme song. And I know if, even if you don't like the movies, like the songs are just so good. And it's amazing to me how people can, with movies, like when you hear Star Wars, like you think of the Star Wars movie, like they made a story with that song and like movie theme songs, like Pirates of the Caribbean, like, Mandalorian theme song like all those I just think it's amazing how you can you can get a feel for what the story is going to be like just based on like the intro theme uh, another show that I was watching is called Outlander and it has an amazing theme song so I was listening to that a lot too because I found the instrumental version but I can just appreciate you know like an orchestra coming together and making like a beautiful song so that's uh that's what i've been listening to i don't like blare it with my car windows down but when i'm at home i am um, that's what i'm gonna put on our our speaker so thank you back to you table topics master that's awesome thank you um yeah i always enjoy learning more about classical music that's one thing that uh, i wish that i had listened i listened more of so uh so next I'm gonna call on Olivia because I know you've got a good song, right? You know that you've been listening to because you're you're a very musical person. Like even in the way that you talk, it's very like I can tell you've got music on your mind. Yes, I do. Most of my uh, friends and family say, Olivia, you have a song for everything because normally I'll start a sentence off with words and then I'll finish it with a song. So mm -hmm. it's real weird. Don't pay me any attention. Most people around me do the same thing. Anyway, to answer your question, let me start my timer. OK, so what music? First off, I listen to all types of music. So yes, I like classical. Yes, I like some of the oldies, but goodies. I've listened to some of the sticks. Maurice, I don't know what that was you were talking about. I just, I was like, what song is that? But I'm not familiar with it. I do listen to all type of music. Today, I was listening to uh, one of my, I guess you could say upbeat playlists. And the song that was in my mind was The Baby. I know you guys are probably not aware of that called Rockstar. But anyway, so, but what I've been singing most today is uh, Keith Urban, Blue Ain't Your Color. That's one of my favorite songs, not for any particular reason. And it's not like it's a brand new song, but I just enjoy Listen to it. He seems so sincere when he's telling her that blue isn't her color. So that's about it for me. And back to you, Table Topics Master. Awesome. Thank you, Olivia. I appreciate that. Um, country music is one of those things that growing up as a kid, it was just always in the background. I really didn't take the time to listen to it. I kind of like was like, ugh, the country music. I don't like that. But as I've gotten older and I'm starting to like, listen to certain uh artists they they really do stand out they really are uh you know doing something with their music versus just being a country band so that i always appreciate a, a good country recommendation because there's so much of it that it's always nice to find one that uh stands out uh so i appreciate that uh, carrie do you have a song that's been on your mind lately okay good evening everyone the song in my mind lately, actually not. The re and the 
the topic, the question really make me or encourage me to listen to music more. That's a really good question. And the reason I don't I actively not watch any YouTube video or TV or even listen to music right now because uh, that really took my time and I want to spend more time on something else I really want to. So listening, um, watching YouTube or for music, it's not kind of lower priority. But then life is not the really just working or something only I want to do. Life sometimes relax, sometimes even just do nothing. It's, that's so important. And then, but last probably, I would say three, four days, I just turn on the, just background music, it's uh, cafe background music and the YouTube video. That's the jazz type. And then I don't mean to enjoy it, but it makes me really relaxing. That's the reason I listen to it. But again, uh, your question really encouraged me to enjoy more music, uh, like even YouTube or TV or radio or CD or MP player and whatever. And I'll do it. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I hit the wrong button. Thank you, Carrie. I, I appreciate that. And, and that, that makes sense. Sometimes uh, some background music can be relaxing. I've gotten in a habit of, um, you know, finding those lo-fi and chill beat playlists on YouTube and just kind of having something kind of quietly playing in the background can be very, very calming and relaxing. Um, Donovan, do you have a song that you've been listening to lately that you'd like to share with us? Yes. Thank you, Kylo. Actually, I've been um, listening to um, a couple things. Um, I do enjoy jazz, but it doesn't like, uh, just that that mellow feeling, but relaxing vibe to that. I uh, also mostly listen to country music, as like you said before, and I just like to know that. Last night was the CMAs, which was the um, country music music awards, and the person who won was Luke Bryan, and I've always been listening to Luke Bryan so much that I basically know every song in my head, every lyric, and every word. So the two songs I would right now I'm thinking of would be. Most People Are Good by Luke Bryan. And the other song is by Thomas Wett, which he's pretty good. It was about, I can't remember the song title, but it's called Be A Light, actually, which is actually a, a most recent song of his based off of Black Lives Battle. So I like to listen to songs that has meaning to it. And it gives it's kind of interesting to look back at the actual meaning of it and the background of why they wrote that song. Like for an example, most people are good. Um, Luke Bryan did it based off of people everywhere, right? Well, not everywhere, but just as a moment of, like even though that things are looking not so great, there is one thing in common that most people are good. And to me, that's important because right now there's a lot of hatred, a lot of fighting and stuff like that. And to me, when I listen to Luke Bryan, not just to that particular song, it just makes me think about how society is portrayed as good, but mostly it paints the picture of being a bad society in a way, but in a way it's a good society, but people just don't, you know, agree with that. Thank you, back to you, Kyle. Thank you, Donovan. I appreciate that. That'll. Uh, it sounds like Luke Bryan will be another country artist that I need to take a look at. 
um, I really, I really respect when an artist takes the time to uh, pour out their heart and their feelings on a on a situation like that, and um, to try to bring people together with their music uh, rather than just you know create a hit, try to actually say something. I, I really appreciate when an artist does that. Um, so I really enjoyed this table topics. I've created a list of songs that I'm going to start listening to. So you guys have increased my musical knowledge, and I thank you for that. And hopefully we've all kind of learned a couple different things from each other about what everyone likes and um, you know dislikes and things like that. And uh, you know we've all just gotten to know each other better over the process. And I relinquish the lecture back to David. Thank you, Kyler. And that was a great table topic session. I think music can be an incredibly powerful thing. It has at times in my life affected me emotionally and whether it's soothing me, if I'm having a heartbreak, it comforts me, or if I'm wanting to get motivated, it can motivate me, it can do a lot of things. And, and there's so many great artists and music out there, it's, it's more than I could ever listen to. And it's good to, to try a variety. So I'm glad everybody was able to share. So moving on, we're running a little behind, but I think we'll be okay. I'll turn the lectern back over to Kyler for our general evaluation. Greetings fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Before I get on to the general evaluation, I'm going to call on the different roles and they will give me their report. Speech evaluator. Uh, I'll call on the speech evaluator first. I apologize for that. So uh, let me call on, now I, Carrie's speech didn't have an evaluator, is that correct? Because it was a pocket speech? Okay, all right, good deal. So was I'll, Maurice gonna evaluate? Carrie? Well, I, I can give a little bit about it. Sure. Okay, all right, let's do that then. So I'll call on Maurice to evaluate Carrie's pocket speech. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Carrie's pocket speech was about practicing meditation and emphasis. Well, one of the emphasis on, of the speech was practice, practice, practice. And what struck my mind, which really has little to do with her speech topic, it was just based on the word practice, was an old all-star basketball player. He had a press conference. He wasn't showing up to practice, I guess, during a certain period of time. His name was, was Allen Iverson. And he says, you know, it wasn't about the game. It was about practice. He kept repeating it. It was about practice. You know, in front of the press corps, it was practice. It's about practice. But going back to Carrie's speech, practice, practice, practice. It's not always about the game, it's about practice. Because if you don't practice, you're not gonna perform well in the game. But what Allen Iverson had, his hangup at the time was showing up to practice. But otherwise, in her speech, you know, she had great vocal variety great clarity of voice or eye contact looking into the camera was good. Her gestures, her comfort level was good. And the audience, I'm sure the whole audience had good amount of interest and it was engaged in her speech. So I don't really see anything, I don't really see much that she could have improved on. But to challenge yourself, just keep on challenging yourself and in increase your speech abilities. And back to you, general evaluator. Thank you, Maurice, thank you. Thank you, Maurice, I, I appreciate that. Um, you know, off the, you know on, on the spot evaluation, that was good. Um, it was, uh, it was a good evaluation. So now remind me real quick, who do we have uh, set up to evaluate Donovan? For um, Donovan's speech was gonna just be a little bit of everybody uh, critiquing yeah. it and giving them some feedback. Okay, um, in that case, we can, um, anyone who wants to speak up or wants to add something, we can take turns. You, you wanna go first, Olivia? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay, cool. Okay, hey Donovan, I really enjoyed your speech. Uh, I will make mention of two two things. One of them is uh, I know it's kind of hard with a paper that that's that intense or that long to look up, but just try to look up as much as you can. If you have a podium, 
it's all, it's sometimes good if you can just sit your papers down and kind of put your finger where you are so you don't lose your place. And then you can look up a little more and look back down and you kind of would know where you are if you just had your finger sitting on your paper. And then the next thing is, I think you kind of got tired towards the end because you lost a little bit of your spunk. At first you were real uh, loud and, and you had some good energy going. You had good energy throughout the whole speech. But I mean, the first two, three, four minutes, it was captivating. I was captivated by what you were saying. And then as your as it got to the end, your energy level kind of dropped. So if you can just maintain that passion at the very beginning, all the way through, your audience is going to feed off of how you behave a lot of times. So uh, just keep the energy level high when you're speaking. I think you did a great job. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you. I can add something. I thought that I really realized what Olivia just said that just dawned on me as well that towards the end that it looked like you were getting a little bit tired, but that's understandable in a long speech like that it takes a lot of energy to keep going. And this is a practice speech is why you're doing it here so I thought you did very well overall. And at the beginning, especially you were pretty good with use of hand gestures when you were talking about like two countries or, or you said, mm -hmm. so that that was good that that keeps our attention. And I thought your pronunciation was good overall. The, the it's, for me, it's hard if I'm just reading a script, but it, I try to try to just have key points. I know what I'm going to say and, and kind of ad lib parts of it. But reading that, that much material can be a bit monotonous, I think. But it's also, I, I would, it's good to throw in, I think, uh, for myself, some personal thoughts. I don't know if that's appropriate for this presentation, but kind of because some of these are really powerful concepts. These are evil people we're talking about and, and terrible things that have happened. So just a little bit about how I just like put myself in that position and how that I would feel. But if it's appropriate for, for that kind of a talk would be adds to it to me just to give a personal opinion on some things but that's about all i had uh, other than it's what i do i kind of cheat sometimes if i have if i don't know if you're doing this in person you can't get away with this but on zoom i'll actually like take my notes and i'll tape them to the top of the monitor so i'm looking at them but it almost looks like i'm looking at the camera so there's some cheats in zoom we can do but that, that's all i've got i thought that was a great practice speech and thank you for giving it with us tonight donovan and back to you mr thank you david Thanks, David and Olivia. Does anyone else have any uh, advice they want to give to Donovan before we move on? All right, we'll move on. Uh, the only thing I would add, Donovan, is I thought the content of your speech was very interesting. Um, I enjoyed, that's a topic that I kind of have a vague knowledge of, um, but I enjoyed getting uh, some more details and, and more in depth uh, that you took the time to explain that. Um, Thank All you. Right, so moving on to the, the next portion of the meeting. Um, as you see, I've got my, my cat decided to join, sit in my lap. Um, next portion of the meeting, I will call on the, the timer, Olivia. Hello, everyone. I will give you your timer's report for the night. For our first speech, Carrie, it was only seven minutes and 34 seconds. So I hope that's what you wanted to be. It was real good for me. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Donovan, your speech was supposed to be 10 to 12 minutes, and you did exactly 11 minutes and 54 seconds. So very good on that. Very good on your timing. Okay, moving on to the table topic speeches. David, yours was one minute and 40 seconds. Maurice, you were two minutes and seven seconds. Cheyenne, one minute, 51 seconds. Olivia, 58 seconds. Carrie, yours was one minute and 23 seconds. And Donovan, yours was two minutes and 50 seconds. Back to you, General Evaluator. Awesome. Thank you, Olivia. Appreciate that. All right. So next we have the ah counter slash grammarian Cheyenne with her report. Hello, everyone. I will not be costive in giving my report. 
Uh, we did not have any uses of the word of the day that I caught, which is okay. It's just kind of a weird word. We were uh, costive about its usage. Yeah, we were costive about its uses. Too late. <laughs> um, so I just used a bill word. I did not catch any misuses of the English language. We are very good about that. We usually don't mm -hmm. have any of those. We had a few filler words. Kyler, I caught a few ums, ahs, and us. Olivia, I caught two us, but it wasn't during your speech. It was uh, maybe during your evaluation or in between. And I have said probably more than five, so, but I didn't catch any other ones. So good job, everyone. So that's you, sir. All righty. Uh, I believe that's... Oh, uh, I caught a uh. <laughs> I, I think that is the last, last, last role to call on. Am I missing anybody? All right, so that my overall evaluation of the meeting is, is we did great. We had to start off with a little bit of a delay, but you know sometimes that happens, especially with Zoom. There's usually uh, there's usually some something or another that kind of slows us down, and, and that's just a technical thing. I, th I think that may just be the nature of Zoom, um, but we handle it well. We always get you know on track as quickly as possible. So uh, I really appreciated everyone's hearing everyone's you know opinion and everyone sharing their musical ideas with me and or uh, re references and um, enjoy with things they enjoy and I believe that other than other than the beginning I think everything else went really well this evening and so back to you David. Thank you Kyler and thank everyone for participating this evening. I love those table topics, uh, talking about music. That's a great way to get different ideas about different things and how people think. And, and uh, we had two prepared speeches this evening, which was great. We're doing better with that. And overall, I, I agree with Kyler that we've had a good meeting. It's 746, so we're just really one minute over. We don't have an educational overview, and I don't believe we have any awards this evening. Hopefully, Luke will be back with us next week. And that's about all I've got. Does anybody have anything else before we close? Well, thank you again for participating. It, I, this has really been good for me. I, it's been a bit of a stressful day. I had my second Pfizer shot last week. And I think like Cheyenne mentioned, it kind of knocked me out a bit. I still feel a little bit fatigued, but I'm, I'm getting back on track. And, and this helps just you know, the, getting out and, and doing, doing something. So, so that's great. And we'll see you next week. And everybody have a good day. Thank you. Bye, David. Bye, Carrie, how thank are you. Bye-bye. Carrie, are you feeling better? Yeah. I was asking you, are you feeling better, Carrie? Oh, yeah. No, I, it, fine. it took about one week after the shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And what about your speech? How was it? Oh, and I, I didn't win this time, but I, I did the best. Okay. <laughs> All right. You are always the winner. What'd you say, Karen? No, I did the best. I promise I did my best. And then okay. I really appreciate all your help. And I, I do appreciate it. I do. Okay. Right, and I try next year again. I'll do. I'm not going to get Yes. Up. Well, you are a winner in our book. So don't worry about that. First <laughs> prize goes to you. She did very good. She okay, didn't have well, any mistakes and it, it was really beautiful, but, but it's a tough competition and you, and you never know what the judges are thinking. So, but we yeah. were, it, it was a good experience. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. All righty. Well, that's it for me, everyone. Have a great night. See you next All right, Monday. Have a great Bye, night. Guys. Have a good night. Bye. We'll see y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.